Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about your superpower that is detachment. And I'm going to talk about how to get there. How do you get to a point where you're detached enough in order to see your manifestation come in? So I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get to that point without trying to force it. But we'll go into a bit more detail. I'm going to go into detail about why detachment is so powerful, what attachment is, and then the key points. So the main point, detachment being, why do I call it a superpower? Because it's so fast. When you get to a point where you are detached enough, then things can shift really, really fast. I'm going to give you five main points here to follow to get you into that state without trying hard because you cannot try to let go of attachment you can't try hard to let go of it because what you resist persists and it will fight back even more and you'll feel it even more and you might get little periods when you don't and then it will come back and you'll feel really really resistant more so than you did before you started to do it the first thing is this and it's a really great statement it went viral on tiktok this statement i didn't know that uh, and i'd heard i'd heard this statement a long long time ago i think it's only fairly recently gone viral on TikTok and people are, are doing it and, and affirming with it for 10 hours straight and adding bits onto the end of it. Don't need to do that. Definitely don't need to do it 10 hours straight. But I do like the statement and I do use it. And it is, I do not chase, I attract. I do not chase, I attract. Simple statement. Now, what's going around online is got, I do not chase, I attract. And then what is belongs to me, it comes to me. And, and it, it just makes it really long-winded, but I don't go with any of the long-winded stuff. Don't need it. Really simple statement. I do not chase, I attract. It's very empowering. So it's, that's the first thing to do. When you're looking at detachment, keep saying that to yourself. Say it to yourself over and over if you want to. I mean, I can say it quite happily 10, 20 times in a session, even more than that sometimes, um, because I like to remind myself I want to keep in that state of detachment because occasionally something will come up in my life and I'll feel slightly less detached than I would normally be. So using this on and off all of the time is a really great statement. You're not hammering it out, you're not trying hard to detach, you are just aiding yourself to get to that point of detachment. Number two, stop trying to lose that attachment. Stop trying to be detached. Accept your attachment in the moment and think, I really want this. So of course, I'm gonna have an element of attachment. It's absolutely natural. I'm a human being. If I had no level of attachment, then I wouldn't really want it all that much unless I was a Buddhist monk or something. And then Buddhist monks don't really want for anything, do they? They don't really want anything. They don't desire things. So. It's not about having zero attachment, it's about being under 50%. I always like to measure on a scale of one to 10, so 10 being very attached, one not being very attached at all. And if you come in a five, brilliant, because it's fairly easy to then get down to a four and to a three from that point. If you come in at a seven or an eight, that's cool too, because you will start coming down. If you start implementing these things, another thing I will say is I release the need to detach. I release the need to detach. I release the need to detach. It's a, again, a really simple statement. And the reason we hold on to things really tightly when we know we need a level of detachment is we really try hard and we have a need to detach because we know, we sort of know deep within our soul that if we don't have some level of detachment, we aren't going to manifest. So we get hooked on the getting to a point of detachment. And that just doesn't work. It doesn't get you to detachment. It only gets you more attachments. And really important, if you can practice doing this, if it scares you, then um, think again, change your mindset on embracing something. So you have the attachment at the moment. Let's say you're at a level eight. So you're quite high on the attachment scale. You're gonna feel attachment inside of you and then you're going to embrace it like you're giving it a big hug and you're loving it because when we embrace feelings, beliefs, assumptions, anything like that, it pa they pass through all the quicker. Imagine every part of you, so every feeling, belief, assumption is a moving part, but they get, they're stalled, you know, the engine stalls sometimes because we are really overly attached to stuff and we're waiting to see a result and it doesn't happen. So those parts are stalled, but all they need is you to start the engine again. And then when you embrace and even give love, they 
that engine starts up again and they are ready to move on. So you help a situation change by embracing it and you can do it with absolutely anything. I'm gonna to link to the video I put up uh, the other day, um, which talks all about this, which might really help you with that. So that is really key. And then the fifth and final point is to do the 95% chance. Again, I, I will link to that video too, is to write what you want, write what you want, write what you don't want. So the outcome you want and the outcome you don't want, look at the outcome what you, that you want and put 95% under it and the outcome you don't want 5%. It's a mind shift thing. It's like you look at that and you think, yeah, actually, I believe in manifestation. I know that I can do this. If I didn't think there was any chance of this, I wouldn't even be attempting to manifest it. And then it shifts your mindset to think it's actually more likely that that's going to happen than that's going to happen. And what it does is it takes your attention away from the negative and just gives more focus to what you do. And you kind of feel that that shift within as you're doing that. Or maybe you don't. I mean, I do slightly, but you maybe you don't. But just by doing that and writing it down and reading it back to yourself and look, looking at it every now and again, it will remind you there's a, such a strong chance that this will happen. When we really want something, there's an argument for saying we really want it because actually it's already happened because time so say is all happening at once. I don't know that, that's just a theory that I sometimes wonder about that and think, is that why we sometimes randomly really want something? We don't really understand where it's come from. It's because it's actually happened. And so we want it. I don't know. Again, don't take that as any, anything factual whatsoever. That is just a, something that I do wonder about sometimes. I wonder about a lot of stuff and I I sort of talk to myself about it in my head because it's interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating, this whole topic. So the key here is don't get hung up on detachment, but do know that if your levels of attachment come down under 50%, so, or a scale of one to 10, under five, it's kind of easy, I think, in a bit like that, isn't it? I like those single numbers. So let's say you're at a four, that would mean this. That would mean that there are long periods in the day, so we're thinking about two hours at a time at least, where it is not in your conscious awareness. That is detachment, that's all detachment is. Simple as that, you're doing something else, you're out with friends, you're working, and it's just not there in the background. Often what happens, you may not think you're attached to an outcome, but you have an underlying feeling that's there all of the time, and I call it like a splinter or a niggle. It's there, but it's not strong, but if you become aware of yourself, you can actually feel it there. And that is the lack of it. That is the fact that you don't have it at the moment. That is the situation as it is now. You feel it, it's like a little energy inside of you, but it's incredibly subtle uh, and so much so that people don't realize its power, but it's on autopilot, it's there all the time. So talking to your higher self, please help me to forget about this at least 50% of the time. So that I'm doing things and I'm not thinking about it. Please help me lose this from my conscious awareness at least 50% of the time. That is an incredible statement. That's an incredible intention because really it's so much easier to work with that for your subconscious and your mind to take that on board and work with that than it is to say, please bring this into my life tomorrow. You know, that what it is that you want. It will come if you get to that level of detachment it will come and when it when will it come it will come in one of those moments that you're detached it will come in the moment where you're engrossed in something else it will come in the moment when you're out with friends when you're working on a project that you really have to think about and concentrate on and it's not in your conscious awareness that is when it comes it's feeling it's all about feeling state and if you're hung up on something you're waiting for a result you are in observer mode so in quantum you are kicking in the zeno effect so you are observing what is and almost expecting to see more of it so of course you keep seeing more of it you don't want to be in observer mode but again you don't want to try too hard to get out of it i really hope this was useful I have written a book, Degrees of Attachment, which I will put up now for you to have a look at. The link is down below. It might really help you. It's really helped some people just look at attachment differently because there are degrees of attachment. You don't have to be at zero. Don't ever think that you have to be at zero. They have to be completely detached to manifest because you don't. I've never been completely detached, never. And I think, I think the level that I have manifested at of attachment where it has been there uh, uh, some degree of the time is about 30%. So that's not bad. So we're looking at three on the scale between one to 10, probably at a three, maybe slightly more than that, but the majority of the time, so I was dominant on not thinking about it, dominant on getting on with my life, 
that's what you look you're looking for dominance the dominant state is i'm just getting on with life i'm just doing life and then it shows up i really hope that this was useful uh, don't be scared of detachment and if you've been watching videos that go on and on and on about persistence you must persist you must persist think to yourself okay persistence isn't a bad thing but am i persisting against a feeling of lack am i persisting against a feeling of not having of waiting what am i doing but if you're persisting in just a doing way so you're affirming because you like affirming but you don't feel that you're pushing at reality that's different doing is not a problem it's the try hard factor the chore that i'm working bloody hard at this and nothing's happening that's the problem if you're persisting like that take a reset just take some time and go i'm just going to have one or two weeks away from even thinking about manifesting and i'm just going to do life then i'm going to come back to it i don't i've never gone with persistence i can persist in an idea of something i'm doing that at the moment persisting in an idea of something i want but it doesn't take over my thoughts it doesn't rule me it's not ruling me it is just there sometimes and i wonder if it will happen and i want it to happen and i'm feeling it uh, like there is a good chance, there's a 95% chance that this will happen, but I'm not hung up on it. If it doesn't happen, I, I always like to say, so if it doesn't happen, something else amazing will happen and you'll think, oh, thank God it didn't happen because then this wouldn't have happened. Because my, my life in a couple of ways has panned out like that. And what has happened has been an even better version of what it was that I was thinking about. So, you know, don't be hung up on outcomes as if it can only be this, because if it's something else, it would be better. It will be, and it will be something that you've actually have wanted, that you have thought about in the past, but you've probably thought was unattainable. But um, but that that really helps you get into that state of detachment by thinking, okay, I am open to something amazing that makes me smile. That's my favourite saying. Um, uh, if I don't really know what I want in a situation, or I think maybe this might happen, maybe it's not, I say, please let this happen, or something that makes me smile. Um, and mostly the stuff that I want happens. It's only occasionally that it's been something different, but each time it's been a bit of a curveball, but it's always been something that's been in my psyche at some point, that's been within me at some point. So the subconscious stores everything and it's been better. So anyway, I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm an author, manifesting coach and a mindset coach.